Hey guys, it's Ed Bud here. Welcome people, and I hope you're staying safe out there. If you are getting out and being able to run, that you're staying in line with those local rules and regulations. I know everywhere is different at the moment. Those rules are there to kind of protect all of us. I know Boris Johnson has allowed people to get out and exercise once a day, so thankfully still able to get out and run here in the UK right now. So a quick update on my training activities over the last few days. I say training activities, it's mainly the activity of staying sane. So last week I made a quite conscious effort to get back out in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20. It's a shoe I got right at the tail end of 2019. Haven't really piled too many miles into it, but I'm doing that right now. So giving these another chance to shine really. I had a few problems with them early on. I uh, had some really bad rubbing on the outer side of my heel when I first wore these. Albeit they do feel a bit of a faster shoe in comparison to the Ultra Boost 18 that I wore a couple of years ago. This shoe's been performing quite well actually after I've taken it out again, although I wouldn't say that the fit is perfect for me. After a six mile effort the other day at around about seven minutes 47 per mile, I decided enough was enough and I've just completely removed the insoles from these now. You're just left with that kind of mesh on top of the boost footbed. Yeah, I took those insoles out and the next run I left them behind a bin actually. I'm kind of hoping that no one would steal them. And the next four mile effort that I did in them was about seven minutes 23 seconds per mile there's a slight increase in internal space in the shoe by taking those insoles out and i got a much much better fit it was a much more enjoyable kind of feeling running in these without the insole the shoe still felt really reasonably cushioned it was almost sort of overkill actually having those insoles in there i think there's so much boost here in the midsole that a overly cushioned insole was just complete overkill so I'm glad I'm getting a few more miles out of these. Got something special planned once I hit 100 miles, hopefully doing a comparative video with a good buddy of mine. So the following day took in around 10 miles, I think it was about 10.39 miles in the Saucony Triumph 17. It was a long run, at relatively low pace. I had to get some jobs done, I had to deliver some supplies to my folks. The average pace was about seven minutes 49 per mile. There was some medicine to pick up for my folks there in their 70s, so got to look after them, make sure they got the supplies they need. They've been housebound for, what, three weeks or so, perhaps even longer than that. But certainly erring on the side of caution, which is what everybody needs to do. So I slept on the old Saucony Triumph 17s and got out there trying to avoid people as much as possible. It wasn't actually too difficult to avoid close quarters with anybody, even though it was a Saturday morning, it was very, very quiet everywhere. Got some decent elevation in on this run, uh, had the pack on as well with quite a few things so perhaps a tougher workout than I'd normally do for that sort of distance. After a quick chat with my folks which was kind of me sat in their driveway and them in their doorway keeping some distance I decided to head out of town to the north of Yeovil through some of the country lanes. It's absolutely beautiful scenery down there. The weather was wonderful. Lovely sunlight. Temperatures are so mild really for what we're really used to around this time of year. Lots of country lanes, lots of quiet fields, just animals i barely saw a soul i switched off the headphones and just enjoyed the solitude and the peace i think sometimes feeling alone can be a very scary prospect for some people but bizarrely being an only child it kind of reminds me of being a kid no responsibilities no worries just simple times dodging bees spotting insects and talking to the cows and the horses beautiful conditions and when i arrived back my lovely wife had baked some wonderful banana cake. It was amongst the best that I'd ever tasted. The Triumph 17s and I went down some country lanes and paths and roads I'd just never been down, even though I've lived in this town the majority of my life. Shoes are feeling really good up to about eight or nine miles, but I think round about that point, I was kind of wishing for a shoe that was a little bit lighter. The weight of the shoe started to catch up with me around about that point. That side though, it still felt really well cushioned. I just think it was that weight that was kind of tiring me out a little bit. I did feel pretty fatigued by then. Next day was a very conscious effort to sort of slow things down again, just get some easy miles in. So I went back to the Adidas Ultra Boost 20s. As I mentioned earlier, a much more comfortable shoe without those insoles. So it's four miles at roughly seven minutes, 46 per mile, 136 beats per minute, heart rate average over that run. And not really a mass of people to avoid, even though the weather's beautiful out there. People were staying indoors. It was sunny and just crystal clear skies. Absolutely wonderful out there. Somewhat weird though, reaching for the shades every day at the moment. You know, what happened to winter? Where did it go? Did it even happen? Following day, hit the Riverwalk Trail again in the Terra Kiger 5s. Really slowed it down there, just taking in the lovely countryside and surroundings. 
four miles at seven minutes 59 per mile. More mud and twig action in the Kiger Fives. An interesting shoe really with quite a low drop. I really do enjoy running in that one. Every time I kind of roll it out of the garage, it kind of feels like one of those vintage cars. I dust it off, put them on my feet and they serve me well. Conditions out there were mainly dry. There were still some boggy areas. We haven't had any rain for quite a while here. I find the outsole on the Kiger 5 ideal because that trail that I go to has a, must be about half a mile approach on some pavement and grass and they never feel too kind of clunky as you're on those non-trail conditions. When well, I do get there though, it's a good test of a trail shoe really. You've got mud, you've got gravel, grass, this kind of rocky areas, there's some tree roots, all sorts of things that you typically encounter on a trail. So hardly a soul around on the Monday evening. Really beautiful, very peaceful. Got some real peace of mind out there, getting out the four walls. Later that night, our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, did place some more extreme measures in terms of lockdown in the UK and I think it's very understandable why. So we can still get out for a, some sort of exercise, walk or run once a day, but all shops aside from food and sort of supermarket outlets are now closed. It does seem like some retailers are still delivering stuff via their couriers and things like that, but of course it's just down to necessities now. I'm just glad that I still have the opportunity to run. Being responsible about it of course is it's important for me to get supplies for my folks and it also enables me to keep on dreaming about new running shoes and running events and the future. Being sentimental about the future. I was really grateful that we were still able to get out and run so on the Tuesday I decided to turn on the afterburners and hit some higher paces. Quite a lot of the miles I've been running in previous days have been sort of lower pace miles so I really wanted to hammer it down, really put the pedal to the floor and just see what I could do in terms of pace. So six miles at an average of six minutes 57 per mile, clocked in around about 41 minutes 58 seconds in the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. I'm approaching 100 miles in this one now, should get there within the next couple of days so do watch out for a 100 mile special review on the next percent. Heart rate average was about 147 beats per minute. I've really got the breathing dialed in now and those six miles, oh, it felt great to go fast, I have to say guys. Weather conditions were absolutely spot on as well. It was warm, just absolutely perfect. I think it was probably about nine degrees out there. Absolutely beautiful conditions. No doubt about it, these are holding up better than a pair of the 4% at this distance, I'll tell you that. Great to get some miles in at spot on my target half marathon pace there. And I was feeling really great as well. It would be round about this time I'd be in a taper for the Yeovil half marathon, which would have been this Sunday. But of course, really encouraging to see that my health and my fitness got right up there. My technique's getting better. Really, really encouraging signs. A video wouldn't be complete without some musical recommendations. I've dug this CD out from R. Dean Taylor. Now, I first heard of this chap from my cousin, Paul Budgie Bozinski. I think he played me a couple of tunes, uh, one of them called Gotta See Jane, and another one called Ghost In My House. Now, R. Dean Taylor um, was kind of famous, certainly in the UK, for the Northern Soul scene. Some great kind of R&B tunes, really interesting kind of singing style, and an artist I think a lot of people have just missed purely. So do check out R. Dean Taylor. This is a, an essential collection, probably got all his best sort of singles on, but certainly worth a listen. Kind of going back through my CD collection again, this fantastic album from the Webb Brothers. It's called Maroon. Oh, there's so many good tunes. This really takes me back to the very late 90s, uh, early noughties. The Liars Club, Can't Believe You're Gone, Summer People. These guys were sons of the famous songwriter Jimmy Webb. I think one of the sons or one of the brothers played guitar and sang and then the other one played keyboards and sang. They had a really great band. I remember seeing these guys at, I think it was V Festival in 2000. I think they only did two or three albums. They were all great though. Uh, but certainly this is one of my favorites that I picked out on the run this week is Maroon by the Webb Brothers. Bit of fun this one, a album a collection actually of tunes from William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. It's called Spaced Out. It's, uh, <laughs> it's completely bizarre actually. There's some really strange cover versions on here um, by the two Star Trek actors. I think probably the most bizarre one on here is William Shatner's version of Mr. Tambourine Man. It, it sounds like he's kind of losing his mind actually at one point in the track. And of course everybody loves Leonard Nimoy's version of the Ballad of Bilbo Baggins. There's some Shakespeare readings on here from William Shatner and possibly my favourite 
a track called Highly Illogical by Leonard Nimoy in his kind of Spock role. So do check that out if you want a, a good laugh. It's called Spaced Out, a collection of tracks by Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner. Sorry if you could hear some scratching in the background there. Beast had decided that she'd had enough of listening to me and had gone to use the cat litter tray. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching through to the end. Hope it's brought some smiles to some faces. Please remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done already. It would mean a lot to me. And make sure you click the bell down here for notifications of when new videos are launched. Comment below with any of your comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. In fact, I love answering them. Make sure you give the video a like. It helps to push us up the rates. And make sure you share it with all your running buddies. Or in fact, people that don't even like running. I know that there are some people out there. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.